so, so blessed to have my brother open up and begin to establish and talk about the issues of the covenant. God says he's going to write his laws. And you know, you will not have to say in Hebrews chapter 8, you will have to say, Know the Lord. You will all know the Lord. Because, and God will be merciful to our unrighteousness. You see, there are, those are activities, those are the workings of the covenant. And the, the, the essence of all of these things is to make us a people. He's bringing us into that place. Levi, is not, Levi will not just remain a house who just have a lot that is resting, that is not explored or that is not taken up. But Levi becomes a people who come into a true expression of priesthood. Levi becomes a people who have laid hold of the covenant and by reason of the covenant, they've, take, they, they've cached the fear of the Almighty in their hearts. And he said, by that, that covenant was given to them to, for life and peace. So the covenant became a full operation of the life of God. Or the covenant is to set to roll or set in motion that eternal life of God. So the activities of Levi was a progression to priesthood and God was going to use that to bring them to a place where he could trust them to fully realize his essence. Praise the Lord. He said the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. He said the law of truth was in his mouth. The blessed place of the priesthood is not just that the priest can talk. The priest has been made. The priest has been formed. The priest has learned to walk. The priest has taken laws. They've been lined up in the hearts. The priest has learned the righteousness of God. He has learned the laws of God. And that is our ordination as a people. And how does, how, how does God bring us to that place? And that is how God is coming to us again in this season, in these times. Because he truly wants to bring us to a place where we will truly come to that pre precious experience of the law of truth. He said iniquity was not found in his lips. Because hearts have learned to respond accurately to God. They've learned, hearts have, great, have acquired stature. They've learned the law, the law of life. So what we are coming into in this season or what God is establishing to our hearts is to say, to let us know that he's, he means business and ultimately we are going to see the covenant show a face of a reality of God by a people. So a people will now become that emblem or a full expression of a covenant that is being behind the veil that has, been not, that has not been visible. Hallelujah. So God is assuring us that I'm going to make a people who will partake of my priesthood, who are going to come to the very most, they partake of my most holy things, and by that reality, they will keep the law of truth. They will walk in, with him in peace and equity. The walk of peace is not just a walk of, it's not, a, it's not an accidental walk. The law of, the, the walk of peace is the work of a heart that has been engraced. It's a heart that has received learning, learning upon learning. And by that, God begins to bring us to a state of stability, a place of, a place of, I'm seeing, they say, talking about motion, they say there's, a, there's what you call a uniform motion, uniform, a body is either in a state of rest or uniform motion, meaning, there is a place where you get to, you have, you are, you, you, you like your auto run. And that place of auto run is the place where the things of God begins to prosper. So God needs to bring us to that place. And he also talked about equity. Equity is not just natural fairness. Equity is a man who has learned the law of the Lord. When a man, President was talking about on, 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 on Thursday, people who, who have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. People who God would have trained their mind, they have received the exercise of the law of the Lord, and by that they will be able to give them hearts, their heart, their minds can hold eternal judgment. And God can trust them to be equitable because they have ability to dispense the law of the Lord, they have ability to dispense the realities of God, the wisdom of God, the purposes of God in their seasons. And God will be assured that there is no wastage. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God has so much for us in this season. And as I'm seeing in my heart, I 
I'm seeing a flip of the other side of how God wants to bring us to that reality. Let's look at James chapter, James chapter 1. But let him, verse 6, Lord, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James chapter 3, verse, sorry, James chapter 4, verse 8, sorry, 4, 8. Say, so draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. In view of what God is lined up for us, in view of the provision of how he wants to transfer and write his laws in our hearts so that we can begin to truly manifest the peace, life and peace. In view of that, God is charging us to say, we need to draw nigh unto God. We need to draw near with, not draw near, not more, no more with an evil heart of unbelief. Drawing near in full assurance of faith. We need to draw near. And in this place of drawing near, God is speaking to us. Don't forget that James was not writing to unbelievers. He was writing to Christians. But he will tell them he has established something that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He has established that in chapter 1. And he's coming back again and he's addressing certain issues again. He said in chapter 1 that let him not think that he will receive anything of the Lord. So God is setting before us a provision and is demanding that we have a certain attitude or a certain position of heart or a certain posture to receive. He said, he would say a double minded man is unstable. He said, Let him not think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now, God wants us to come to a place where we will receive everything peace and life. Eternal life is a reality. We can prosper in abundant life. We can come to a place where the laws of God are written and we will have, we will no more say, we will not be taught, or we will not say anyone know the Lord. Say, We will know the Lord. And in that said again, he said they will turn many from their iniquity. A heart that has turned many from iniquity is a heart that has learned the law of the Lord and has embodied it. And so God is demanding that we come off but being double-minded about our positions, about our ability to, just to stay with what God is spoken of. And so God is calling us to say, cleanse your hands, you sinners. One of the things that makes a man a sinner is the fact that the man meddles with issues of value. When he says, don't give the valuable things to swine, when God considers a heart swine, it's because the heart does not have great value for things of the kingdom or things that pertain to his very holiest. And God, what God is demanding is that God we, we will cleanse our hands, we will be cleansed and have a right attitude to hold spiritual things, to be able to value and tremble and hold reality. Pastor Thompson was sharing yesterday and he was talking about the conversation of, of certain fathers of faith who based on the level of grace or the word that God gave them, they held on to it at that time of their life and they will not take on any other conversation. So God is demanding that we will cleanse our hearts. We will not hold the things of God. We will not hold it with partiality, with levity, with being careless about it. And he says again, sometimes, again, the issues again are much deeper than, than we think. And God is demanding purification. What God, when God is demanding purification, he, he sees an inability for us to truly come to that wholesomeness, that reality, that provision. Life is available, but people are not just able to. It's just like a, a lot. He knew that the angels were going to destroy that, that, that uh, Sodom. He was very aware. He could discern it, he knew it, he knew, he knew. But somehow his heart was not ready to let go. I don't know whether it was affiliations or it was an investment, but the heart was caught in between and he lingered. He knew so much, but his heart could not appropriate what he knew. 
So he was stuck in between, and as a man, you could call a double-minded man. So God is calling us to a place of value in 2018 that we will not be double-minded in our hearts. We will open up to the purification of the Lord of heaven because when we are purified, then truly we will receive all of the Lord. He said, not, let him not think that he will receive anything of the Lord. God is speaking to our hearts and God is demanding that we will make up our hearts from this time and say, God, I will purify my heart. I will not be double-minded. The reality of being, of having your laws written in my heart, of having the very provisions of the life of God, of the life and the peace that are entrenched in the, in the holies of God, the very essence of God, coming to eternal judgment where my judgment is upgraded and I can begin to, of my mind can oscillate with the very frequency of divine thought that these are realities and I'll say I've set my eyes like a flint, I will not look back until all of these things that God has said come to reality in my heart. Can we begin to respond to God? Father, we give you all the praise. We ask for your help, Lord. We ask for your mercy, O oh God. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. We trust you.